benefits with it. And so uh, what do you want to start out with? The breed of the week or chewing? It's up to you. Breed of the week. What is as normal? Just out of curiosity, do we always start off with the breed of the week and don't talk about anything else? Yeah, uh, No, we don't. You're, you're more lively, so we talk about lots of things. If you don't understand why Ron calls me lively, uh, uh, he called me a very lively host one time, and I don't know. It's if right I would... when you started, somebody was asking. Oh, it was my it was my son and I just talking along the way, our, our drive down, and I go, I like Jerry. He's more lively. I don't know if I was just having an excited morning. Normally, I'm very subdued, calm. Oh no, uh... you are not. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. What's the breed of the week this week, Ron? <laughs> it's the soft coated wheat and terrier. Is that a big dog or a little dog? Big dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you talk now. And so the soft coated Wheaton is one of those few breeds that is large and non shedding. And so it's a, one of those, it's unique for a lot of people. And you know, I'm not sure why it's not crazy popular all the time because everybody likes that golden doodle. Uh, the golden doodle is a, a golden retriever mixed with a poodle. Why do they do that, Jerry? Um, Got to engage you. You're you're not engaged. No, I, I wasn't. You I wasn't. In. I was engaged. Uh, why, why do they? they why yeah, do they why do, do? Why do they mix a poodle with a golden retriever? To get a special outcome. You like the the characteristic of the poodle, and you like the characteristic of the retriever, and so you put them all together. Do I? Is that not the right answer? No. Let me ask you, Ron. Why would they uh, mix two breeds together like that? <laughs> <laughs> because of the non-shedding aspects of the poodle. Oh yeah, well, that, uh, I, I thought that was like so, the whole audience was like, "Jerry, you just just go with it." Come I on. thought that that was so obvious that I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they mix that poodle with the golden retriever to get the non-shedding aspects of it. The soft-coated Wheaton is already a purebred and. 100 years, 200 years from now, maybe even shorter, the Golden Doodle will be its own breed, and AKC will adopt it and all that kind of stuff, if a club sponsors it and, and all that kind of thing. I don't think there's any polit... Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I just got to look. No, I, I'm making eye contact with you now. I was trying... You're to, engaged. Okay. I was trying to do some other things, checking scared, levels and doing, me. <laughs> and doing my radio thing, and you embarrassed me on air going, oh, you're not engaged. No. <laughs> I'm a professional. I was actually doing my job, Ron, but I will make eye contact now with you if that makes you feel better. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look down now. All right, so the soft-coated Wheaton. Is this the right breed for you? That's the question we always like to pose to you. And then as we're going through it, we go, okay, you know, is this something you're looking for? So we always like to stump Jerry, big-eyed Jerry. Uh, where does the soft-coated Wheaton originate from? We Wheaton. Think? Wheaton, Illinois. More, come on, try, uh, try. Uh, Germany, Finland, Nova Scotia, Canada, <laughs> Australia. Okay, no, <laughs> Africa. So the roots of the soft coated wheat and terrier trace back some two hundred years. China, it's a country Korea. of origin, Ireland. Oh, I was close. Because isn't like <laughs> I'm okay. I will. I'm. I'm an engineer. I'm I'm not good with geography or English or anything like that. Yeah, that's apparent. But isn't the soft coat terrier? Uh, England. That would be more English. Or Scottish, I guess. Wheaton. Wheaton is referring to a color, so that's not not it. So I don't know. What color is Wheaton? It, it's like the, wheat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind isn't of that why wheat's called wheat? Well, I, I, <laughs> I have no idea. All right, let's let's get serious here. Although there was no specific mention of the breed per se, there are records referencing the more generic Irish Terrier along with mention of the color Wheaton. So that's where that came from. The term Irish Terrier was, in those days, a collective referring to all the working earth dogs of Ireland. Few doubt that the long-legged Terrier breeds in Ireland came about as a result of status passed by Ireland's House of Parliament in the 1600s. I love that. It's always dogs are always passed down by the wealthy, you know, of back then. Always? No, there are some like rogue. I don't like the word always and never. Those yeah, are the two see, words that's that you okay. learned in school. Okay, thanks for whipping my behind. <laughs> um, Point for Jerry. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm Point. <laughs> Gonna, no, but I, I'm going to keep I, an in-studio tally one <laughs> to one right there. Oh, no, I'm two already. I got two on you. Whatever. There you go. So I like it that 
that some of them are from Parliament or you know Cavalier King Charles from the the from Parliament Silk or the King and Queen kind of a thing mm-hmm. there. Um, but then there are some that were designed like. Well, if you're going to have that one, we're going to do this. And they've had. There's other breeds out there that originate. From I was that. thinking really quick about, along the lines of working dogs. There's there's dogs that were uh, on ships and stuff like that, and that, I wouldn't call those elite dogs. Yeah, but I think you could go back to the king and queen because who owned that ship? And, All right, I got you. I will save the ship. I will. I'm not going to give you a point on that one. Continue <laughs> talking. <laughs> All right. So we talked about uh, by Ireland's Houses of Parliament in the 1600s, making it illegal for any but wealthy landowners to keep or own any such hound or spaniel for purposes of hunting. As a consequence, Irish tenant farmers developed dogs. This is case in point right here. Irish tenant farmers developed dogs they could legally keep and breed. The soft-coated wheat interior among them. Right. This is it. I got, I had a That's why I, I trust the AKC book. The first two recorded soft coat and wheat interiors arrived in the United States in 19, what do you think? 32. 47. Bred and exhibited along with their progeny. They drew little interest and slowly faded into oblivion. Ten years later, <laughs> okay, the O'Connor family of Brooklyn, that's a good Irish. Uh, very Irish. Yeah, there we go. New York uh, and the, what, Charles Arnolds of Connecticut. It's interesting. They're telling Grammar Tree Wheatons refers to the O'Connor family and Sunset Hill Wheatons, I guess this is their kennel, refers back to Charles Arnold, uh, resurrected the breed. So they got brought it back. So my f- intuition that it seems to be this breed that vanishes kind of, it just kind of goes off the radar. Um, and it just seems like to me that's what it is. Because when we when we're in the store and you know customers are coming in and saying you know what kind of dog they're looking for i th- they'll say i want a large breed non-shedding and i go oh well there's very few of those kind soft coated wheaton would be one oh i've never heard of that this is one of those that you don't people don't know much about um so going on to the form and function this poor man's hound served the tenant farmer's household as a general all-purpose farm dog he herded and guarded the sheep killed vermin and warned of intruders keen of scent a wheaton might often be found with his master out for the hunt bringing down small game perhaps even helping in the kitchen by turning the spit wow there's a useful impressive dog yes living with one wheaton temperament is unique combining the alert intelligence of a terrier with the steadiness of a working dog, a quick, lively, affectionate dog, the Wheaton retains his puppy exuberance and medium to high energy level all his life. He can thrive in the city or the country as long as he is close to his people and receives ample daily exercise. So that is the key, I think, with the soft-coated Wheaton. I think that's the decision maker for you. Do you want that active dog? Or do you want that more passive or easier dog? This one is going to need exercise daily. Get them out, run. Oh, it's raining. Get them out and run. Oh, it's snowing. Get them out and walk, run. You got to keep going with this one. Um, if you spend too many days hibernating, this dog's going to get anxious, and you're going to go, "Oh my goodness, what's going on here?" I'm sure it's happened before, but are there people that you have heard of in your business that have trained dogs to walk on a treadmill? <laughs> the look on your face of disappointment right now for me asking that is just seriously. It's plausible that a dog could walk on a do, treadmill, right? Do you hear the crickets? Yeah, no, I saw the look of why did you <laughs> ask that? <laughs> No, I have not, actually. I've thought of it, but I've not had anybody say, I've taught my dog. I think that you could... I think I've seen it on YouTube. Yeah, if you were to build, I would say, build up sides on the side and kind of make it into a kennel and just... Not, maybe not on the back side. You don't want to. You mean like in there. make a kennel over the whole I'm not, thing? I'm not saying. I'm not saying maybe just sides so that you kind of guide the dog on yeah, there. The YouTube videos that I've seen, they, they didn't even have sides on it. I like your idea of sides, though. 
I mean, it, then not on the backside. You don't want to trap the dog no, on there. No, no, no. There would be so a, it could get out. And you never it. want to like let this go un unobserved. You want to. Be, oh my gosh! Uh, absolutely no. I'm just. I don't know. I was kind of thinking outside I think the box. A, a, right. Oh, I'm bit. sure people have tried it, done it. Yeah. M yeah. I, I'm sure there's a large portion of the con of the audience right now saying, "Uh, I tried that." <laughs> Yeah, and it might have worked, and it might not have, depending on you know the dog or and uh, and what do you always say? Just because one thing worked for one person on that dog breed doesn't necessarily right, mean it's right. up to the owner and, yeah. and different. Oh, things, I like so. yours. Um, I recently here. I am a huge outdoorsy person. Not like I don't hunt, but I love to go for walks out in like in the woods and the paths and like Palo and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I also like mountain biking and all that. Well, we went, I took the dogs. It was just me. Everybody in my family was doing something and they were away from the house from, for more than one day. So I was like, I want to go do something that we normally don't do. So I picked up the dogs and we went for a hike, a four mile hike. And it was over the top fun. And so, yeah, yeah, if you, it's, Try new things. That's, I'm formulating a show right now based on this is, is get, get, get your dog on. You put know, that get, in, put it that into the Rolodex of future shows. Yeah, and, get out there and do uh, different things. People do with their dogs that they didn't think, you know, didn't realize how much the dog was going to enjoy it. And yourself, I, Susie, my little trouble child, she was like a monkey climbing up the rocks. I thought I was going to have to carry her. Um, I know my dachshund was going to be a little agile and, and all that. And I carried her twice the whole time. Um, but, uh, Gosh, Susie, she just attacked. Like as you approached the rocky inclines and stuff, mm -hmm. she didn't even like pause. She's just like Vroom, right up them. And I was like, this is cool. Wow. So, so yeah, uh, trying different things, being, um, you know, cautious if you, if you're, if you do have concerns and, and, and take those precautions. Going through all of the breeds every single week, another uh, question that just popped into my head is when you said that this breed kind of goes in and out, how many different breeds are there out there? They can't all be popular at the same time. No, and it has, there's so many different things that uh, make a breed popular uh, for, for periods of time. TV shows. T oh, TV shows um, or, or commercials even specifically. Uh, the Chihuahua. Puppy monkey baby. Have you seen that commercial? No. It's a dog, a baby, and a, a dog baby and puppy monkey baby and a monkey. Uh, <laughs> and it's a C CG, a computer graphic, because what are the three cutest things? Monkeys, puppies, and babies. And it's this freakish looking Oh, creature together, puppy monkey baby, <laughs> and and the and it's like up there dancing, puppy monkey baby, puppy monkey baby. I can't even remember what the commercial is for, oh, but I, I just think remember I've that. Seen this, but had no clue what was going on. Okay. It's freaky because it's like a face of a dog, a body of a baby, and a tail of a monkey. <laughs> it's like puppy monkey baby. Anyway, so there's a lot of breeds out there, and I I just do you know how many breeds there actually are? I do not have a count. I think well, it does change from month to month, year to year. AKC is always looking and working with clubs that are sponsoring a purebred that they're bringing to light. I guess looking at that standpoint, then recognize dogs by the AKC, but there could be an infinite amount of, yeah. I mean, so yeah. mutts and different oh, breeds just out like, there. I, I don't know politically, why is there not a specific breed called miniature dachshund? There is one for dachshund, but there is not one for miniature dachshund. A lot of the miniatures have their own clubs, and so that way, that way, you will see that on like if you get your papers, it'll say it won't say miniature dachshund because there is not a club sponsoring miniature dachshund. It will always just say dachshund. So in our store, we go by AKC rules. So people will go, "Well, you got dachshunds, but you don't have any miniatures." And I go, "Well, actually, all of them are miniatures by what your." referring to they're all the smaller kind mm. um but there is no akc miniature docs and kind gotcha. of thing so it's interesting on how that goes rounding up the soft coated wheaton um it, so if you're looking for a larger breed know that it's going to be higher maintenance bigger every when you get something bigger it's always more so there's going to be more energy uh it's bigger so w it can go higher in your kitchen so it can go on it can counter surf where they'll put their head up on the counter and, and start surfing around for stuff. Uh, where if you had a small breed, they can't put their head up there and they can't even jump up there. Uh, so know that there's a little bit more maintenance when you get a large breed. 
obviously this is not a big issue because people love their large breeds so you can work with that um, energy is another thing in that when you're trying to train them you, some, you most often for a large breed have to get them out run them uh, so throw the ball around chase them around the yard and then bring them back in and then you can start working on training because they sometimes it's like a child with ADD they don't want to sit in the chair um, I've heard and this is from Petland people families with children with ADD oftentimes will run the child around the house a couple of times before they get on the bus. And if they do that, the teacher thanks them. Mm -hmm. And I went, I had no idea. Wow. So same thing with a dog. Before you want to train or, or maybe you're leaving for the day, run them around a little bit so that they are worn out, so that they get a good good night's rest or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. And the other thing that we wanted to talk about this morning, can you do chew toys in about five or six minutes? Chewing, talking about... We only have five or six minutes left. I know, we're, time's moving fast. Whoa. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yes, I... Can yeah. you do that? No, I shocked you. Yes, I trying can. To, trying to keep things moving along. All right. So, re, so then... Really quickly, why do dogs chew, I think, is the first part that you want to hit. Anxiety? And, okay. I, I, I am not sure. I'd like to talk with a psychologist to say, can we put a human trait that we refer to as anxiety, can we put that onto a dog and firmly say that that's what's happening? Now, I know a lot of people right now are going, Ron, I see it. Don't be dumb, you know, kind of thing. And I, I'll, I'll go with you. I don't, I'm not saying to not go this route, but I think we misinterpret dogs' behaviors as anxiety when it's, it might be something else. Um, I was just working with my dogs this morning, and Su Susie, our travel child, I put this like gourmet feast together. She, I mean, salmon oil and dog kibble that she loves, and all these extra little fun things and all that. And sometimes she looks into her bowl and she looks up and go, and to me, she goes, really, is this what you're going to feed me today? And I go, you're probably trying to tell me that I've missed something, but I don't know what it is, you know? <laughs> so it's always, we're trying to guess at what the dog's thinking, you know, yeah. um, on anxiety. I think it's oftentimes, I just got a lot of energy right now and I need to get it out mm -hmm. and I'm getting it out this way. And it might be barking, it might be chewing, it might be, um, jumping around and all that. So uh, a close friend of ours, Wendy and ours, I, she said, this is many years ago, she goes, oh, yeah, before I leave, before guests come over, um, before I'm training my dog or whatever it is, I take my dogs out backyard and just run the dickens out of them. And that, she goes, and I find then when we come back to whatever that event is, whether I'm walking out of the house, whether it's a you know party or whatever, my dogs now are mellow as a result. So I think we interpret a lot of energy bundled up and maybe that's the definition of anxiety and uh, then I'm, you know, okay, I, I'm right along with you. Um, so I think anxiety though, like what we're saying right here is a chewing thing mm -hmm. uh, as well. They'll chew because of it. Do you have chew toys for dogs? <laughs> that was a softball. Yes, Jerry, we do. We have a wide variety of them. Some other reasons why dogs chew, if you have a puppy, they're teething. And which is another reminder uh, in our store, people will go, oh, this dog is biting. I go, well, it's actually teething right now. And so that's why it's, it's kind of gumming you uh, that way. So puppyhood is a, is a big one. Uh, boredom, where I got nothing else to do. And it's instinctual anyway. So they go to the chewing uh, aspect. Uh, instinctual in that they are, this is what they do. They chew things apart. They get, you know, if it's out in the wild, they're pulling the flesh and stuff like that. And then medical issues, they need to chew like we need to chew. It's to keep our teeth in our heads strong and all that kind of stuff. It also cleans the teeth. Hard kibble is great for cleaning the teeth. So those are some reasons why dogs chew. So now let's go into, well, what can I do about it? Well, in our store, we do have chews. So I'm now, I knew you were leading me and going <laughs> like, come on, Ron, let's get to it. So you want to get a wide variety and many. You want 20 toys. You don't have to buy them all at one time, but you want a lot of toys so that they can go and chew on what it is. So we refer to those really soft, squeaky, uh, flimsy kind of toys, not for the strong chewers, uh, is latex toys. And they usually come in like Disney figures and all that kind of stuff or dinosaurs or hamburgers. They look like that. 
and they have this squeaker in them. So when they do it, and the squeaker usually resembles something dying. And so that's why the dog, uh, that's what we interpret the dog as liking to do that because I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. So latex is your first one. Then it gets into the rubbery toys, which, okay, we're getting a little more solid. That solves some other needs. If you're, wor if you're wondering about the puppy thing, remember when you were younger and it just felt good to chew? Remember yeah. these, your molars, it really felt good to clamp down. Well, you were losing your molars at that point and you were teething. And so the dogs have that similar thing. So getting the, the rubber, now you get into the harder rubber and into the more plasticky uh, type products. Nylabone is a really popular one. It is safe uh, where they can chew little bits off of it and they will pass it through the digestive tracts because it's small and easy to pass through. Um, so you get into the hard toys, then you get into the soft and plush. Uh, where it feels different in their mouth, and so they like those. And then you get into the natural uh, products. So you're getting into everything from bones to tracheas to uh, bullies, what they call bully sticks. Um, all of them, oh, rawhide is a very good true chew with very little nutrition. Um, rawhide is not good for all, most, if not all, puppies because dogs or puppies and dogs think their throat is like three feet why and and if they chew off then once it gets chewed down they think they can swallow it they and then it gets caught in their throat right so just about so, two minutes and that's the cautionary uh, part of all this is is watch whatever they're chewing because it's your responsibility to make sure they don't gag on these things and correct it if need be so if things get small where they can swallow it take it away throw it away go go buy a new one kind of a thing so that make sure you're observing your dog uh, if it's the first time they're getting the toy so that they don't swallow it gulp it or whatever make sure you get it bigger for those bigger dogs out there get bigger stuff so that they can't get it all the way to the back of their molars that's where they really do crushing so if you get a bigger toy they can't get it back as far so they still are really working it but they're not as forceful uh like on a small toy where they can get it all the way to the back so that's my my tips for chewing. Tips for, for today. Chewing. Thanks for stopping in, Ron. Positively Petland Show on Iowa City's News and Sports Station 800 KXIC every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Tell us about the store. What's going on there? We are Petland of Iowa City, uh, located at the Marketplace Mall, right across the parking lot from McDonald's, from Lucky's Market, from Panera Bread. We're in that outer section. You'll see it. Just come into the parking lot. You'll see a big pet land sign. Our hours of operation today, noon until 6. So you're hearing this this morning. Just put it on your calendar today. Hey, we got to get over to Petland. We got to play with those puppies and the, oh, we got Persian kittens in. You got to come in and see these. They are the cutest. My daughter is going ballistic right now. She wants one. She wants one. I know everybody's feeling when they come in. I'm a, I'm a dad uh, with kids, and they all want the, all the pets. Uh, and then all the rest of the days. So Monday through Saturday, we're open from uh, 10 a.m. until 9 p.m., but today, noon until 6. Don't forget about our buy 10. Get one free on all of our hugely quality premium dog food at great prices. And you can't beat a $5 nail trip. You can't beat it. Positively Petland Show. Uh, nine o'clock every Sunday morning, positive or the Petland stores over on the east side of Iowa City. Thanks, Ron. Thank you.